מוריי ורבותיי, פרשת בלק, פרשת בלק. So what do you want me to talk about? You want me to talk about uh, uh, Balak and uh, the whole uh, trance uh, thing that he did there, the whole party over there, you know, with the... No. I don't talk about this. Yeah, we talked about a few years ago. I want to ask you a question. What makes us be happy? What makes us feel happy? It's kind of a trend that we were going all week long. How can a person reach a, a, a feeling, a sensation of satisfaction and meaning and what we call simchat alev, joyous of the heart, that, uh, that, that we, in a way, are all missing? This kind of question and so on and so forth, or, you know, it's, it's probably maybe the most uh, greatest challenges in which today's day and age is trying to deal with and trying to answer. Somehow we end up to be, uh, you know, at loss with life. And many researchers uh, and very diverse researchers show that happiness and joy is missing from the world. People are not happy. And the more we go further in generation, so is uh, the testimony that people give you that uh, on, on their own feeling, in terms of their own internal happiness, that they feel, they experience, it becomes less and less in a very drastic, you know, manner. So, which is perplexing, because in our world, with all the technology and the modern world and so on and so forth, they found so many answers and so many solutions to such complex issues and, and advancements and so on and so forth, really stands up with an open mouth, completely wandering, to, you know, facing this question, and really, if you look at it, if you look at it, all the effort that are being made to deal with the question of lack of happiness end up to be efforts to divert you from this question, to dealing with this question himself. If you want to know how bad we are doing, I'm going to tell you when the government says it's okay for you to smoke dope and to basically drug the people out, you know that we're in big problem. If you look at, 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 at what's going on in Manhattan today, I feel like I'm inside like a, you know, like a, I don't know, hot box, a walking hot box. Everybody's smoking dope. It's unbelievable. Hot pot, dope, ah, the same, same, I'm still stuck in the 60s somewhere. <laughs> All the same garbage. And different names to that. Now, the same thing, for example, goes with sports. Sport is like uh, heroin for the masses, opium for the masses, as they say. Right? Sport used to be something that was really pure for the sake of sport. Today, sport is all about business. There's no loyalty or nothing like this. Why? To get the people all excited about things. It's all about who can buy more and, and, and which team is going to offer astronomical amount. I mean, to think that, I don't know, Messi was offered something like 360 million euros a year to play. Well, luckily, he said no. I mean, it's just unbelievable by some Saudi football team. So you see that we have, we have a problem and everything is really to the, and all this, this, you know, everything is allowed so you will be indulged in, in pleasures of the body instead of trying to indulge in the, in the pleasure of the mind. And that's a big issue. We have a big problem. However, if we're going to look carefully and bravely at, at, at least maybe one of the blessings of Bilam, which was not known to be such a righteous person, it really holds within itself, or could hold within itself, the foundation for a way and the way to reach real true happiness. Believe it or not. Now, you all want to know, or you're just okay with the chula that Idan made here. By the way, Idan, we smelled it all the way outside. So, good job on that. So, Bilam is very impressed from the way Am Israel is stationed in the, in, in the desert. By the way, Idan is looking for a shidduk, so if anybody wants a shidduk for Idan, he, he makes great children. <laughs> and from the order in which the tents, don't choke, man, it's okay. And from the order in which the tents were arranged in, in, the, in the desert, 
until he comes in and he says the famous pasuk, the famous verse that we say every morning when we, or at least should say every morning when we enter the shul, right? It says, Ma, what do we say? Ma oh my goodness, they, they already doubt. No. It's a, the, the pasuk, he says, Ma tovu alecha Yaakov, mishkenotecha Yisrael. That impression of Bil'am came from, as a result, that the tents of Am Yisrael would not face one another. There is, I mean, if you know anything about nomadic uh, culture and so on, for example, in the Native American Plain Indians, you know, when they had the teepees, the teepees was always facing, they were in a circle most of the time, they were only facing each other, and they had a reason for that as well. But what Am Israel presenting, that was like this, because everybody should not feel lonely, should not feel alone, and so on and so on. But Am Israel, that you did not have two uh, tents facing the opening, facing one another. So, you know, which of course, the, nobody wants to look into somebody else's, pri you know, pri you know to, to invade anybody's privacy and so on and so forth. But if you're going to look a little deeper, there is a certain expression here for a certain mindset that could really lead a person to true happiness and internal joy by doing that. So building this, uh, the, the tents in such, a, in such a fashion that each one stands by itself and does not, the opening does not refer to the other, really symbolizes and expresses the expression that each and every one of us, Rabotai, this is so, so weird to say today because today, I'm sorry to tell you, and I feel that this is one, actually I'm not sorry to tell you, I should not be apologetic about it, I'm saying what I'm saying from the bottom of my heart, from a good place, believe me. One of the, I feel, and it's not, only, it's not only by us as Jews, it's all over the world, is you cannot really express what you feel and what you want, nor you're not allowed to, as, as to maybe to your great surprise, you're not allowed to show any, any signs of individualism. You cannot think for yourself. Everybody's got to think for you. I mean, to the point that today, if you associate yourself with a with a certain party, it's like a, almost like a it's like it's a, it's like a religion by itself. I mean, God forbid, and which is crazy. So, and and by the way, somebody asked me one time. He says, "How is it that you cannot convince the Jews to become, you know, to switch from this party to the other party?" Without mentioning them, because um, you know I'm a rabbi, I should not be political. So I'm not mentioning them. But you know, if you understand, you understand. I said to him because for them. It's like, for example, a person would say, I am a, that's why I'm against about all these things, by the way. Uh, I'm, I'm a Sephardic Jew, I'm an Ashkenazic Jew, I'm a secular Jew, I'm a this Jew. By putting a title in front of you or right next to proximity of the fact that you are a Jew really shows that it takes away from the strength of who you are as a Jew. I am a Jew. That's it, period. So if you're saying I'm a conservative Jew, I'm a reformed Jew, I'm a liberal Jew, I'm a, I'm a you know whatever Jew, right? So as a Jew, you are it's it's secondary to really who you are. But what's wrong with being a Jew? So when you I said to them because to those people, being a whatever Jew, it's like being a having a different faith, the way they practice their. The way they practice their, their Judaism through the politics. It's the new religion. That's why you should not argue with anybody because you can't convince anybody of anything else. That's basically it. So. Modern. Huh? Modern Jew. Absolutely. Modern Jew. So, therefore, yes, if, if, if somebody says I'm a modern Jew, what does it mean? I'm a primitive Jew. <laughs> I mean, you see. And this is exactly what they say in the desert. In the desert, they say that each and every one of us has his own truth and his own unique way of life that fits him. So the sardine can syndrome that we take a can and we can have sardines this big, this big, that big, and we chop the head, we chop the tail, we try to fit everything into the box is not a, Jew, a true Jewish concept of a way of life. So if I, for example, in Israel, it's very sad. If I'm a, a Haredi person and I want to go to work, I need to be concerned, what would my neighbor say? I read today an article in a very Haredi newspaper in Israel that say it's easier. And I'm, I, you know, I wasn't shocked when I read it because I experienced it myself. It's easier to live religious life in Lakewood than it is in Israel. 
It's crazy. But we need to fix this. So each and every one of us has its own unique way. And we all, of course, are bound to the rules of, of, of halacha. And we all bound by certain ethics. But if you look at the halacha, there's so many, so many different ways to go and to interpret. And to unify everything under one thing is really taken on. That was one of the biggest machlokot that they had between Rabbi Vadya Yosef and Rabbi Shalom Masas. When Rabbi Vadya Yosef wanted to umbrella everybody under a certain uniform thing, and Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Masas said, no, listen, we are Moroccan Jews, this is our thing, we're not going to give up. I mean, that's our Masoret. Giving up our Masoret is like, you know, that's what adds color and, and diversity and, and strength to our community. That's why I'm not so thrilled about everybody wearing down a white shirt and pulling a black hat and that will make you a Jew. That doesn't, that doesn't work. And if you tell me that you only have this kind of friends of a Jew, then, but you don't have other friends of a Jew, I, I will tell you, listen, something is wrong with you. And I can tell you this for a fact for myself. I have friends that are super religious. I mean, radical Haredi friends, dear friends of mine. And yet I have friends that are completely secular Jews. And I have Srugi friends, and I have this kind of friends. For me, a Jew is a Jew. I don't look at what kippah you wear or don't wear. I look in your heart. I care, but if you're a good person or a bad person, that's all I care. The way they were sitting in the tents, that is an indication that each one has a thing, and you know, each one to his own, whatever goes on in your house, it's none of my business. None of my business. There were places in Israel that when I tried to go back to Israel, there were places that when I want to sign my kids up, they, I, they show me a certain affidavit that you have to sign. That if you have any non-religious <coughs> friend, I mean family, or family who are not Haredi, your kid cannot come to school. If they're coming to visit you, they can. They're not, I mean, I said, oh, you know what? That's not the place for me. That's not the place for me. I want a place that there is everything. Because my job is to hold myself responsible in such a way that everybody would look and say, oh, wow. You know, I don't mind being that. I don't want to, you know, segregate. Segregation is bad. And that's not a Jewish way. So the privacy is very, very important. Right? And, 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 but the way in which we express our own personality... Right? It's completely different. And each one has his own color and character from his friend. And there's no right over wrong here. Again, if we are all within the envelope of halacha. But halacha, as we said, has many, many angles and many aspects to it. As long as you, again, if you're going to tell me, you know, my, my, it's, it's okay. My expression uh, to God is say thank you when I'm eating a lobster. I'll tell you this is not halacha. We're talking about certain morality. And this is, this is, this is the boundaries. This is the envelope in which we need to operate. Like, for example, if you're talking about an airplane, right, a jet, for example. So every jet has an envelope of operation, of optimal operation. Inside of it, you can do whatever you want. This one can take AGs. They can take, uh, you know, positive. This one can take uh, four negative G and so on and so on. And with this, this envelope of operation, you can do somersaults. They don't care. But otherwise, you're going to crush and burn. Right? If you go outside of your envelope, you're going to crush and burn. But we don't want to crush and burn, so that's what we're doing. But you must allow people express their own individualism and personality as long as it's within the boundaries of halacha. So if, for example, arguments say, I like uh, you know, blue shirts better than white shirts, that's that going to make me less of a Jew. Why should I not be accepted to a yeshiva you know, if I'm wearing a blue shirt? Why? I don't understand that. Well, a, a guy that wears a black hat and a white shirt is a better is a better Jew than a guy who wears, I don't know what, a, a pink shirt and a srugi kippah? I don't understand that. I mean, as they say, who died and left you king? But you, God, you know what's going on in the person's heart. Let's worry about our hearts. And that's the lesson that we learn from this from inside. It's a tremendous, tremendous musar that we could that we could uh, learn. And the musar is that there are two ways in which we as a nation and as individuals, as people in the nation, could really be. And the psukim, the verses that come to teach us, 
is they go like this. Vayavo Elokim el Bilam, and God came to Bilam. Vayomer, and he says, Mi anashim ha'ele imach. Vayomer Bilam ela Elokim, Balak ben Tzipo, Melech Molav, Sha'ach elai. Right? And so on and so forth. Then it says, Hine ha'am ha'yotze mi Mitzrayim. Pay attention. Hine ha'am, the nation, comes out of Mitzrayim. Vayachas et en ha'aretz ata lecha kavali oto, ulai ulcha li lachem bo. Maybe I can go and, and fight it. That's when... when when uh, Balak goes to Bilam and he tells him that, right? And in a way, because uh, it, it's, it, it says also in, in, a, in a different pasuk, Hine am yotze mi mitzrayim. Hine am yotze mi mitzrayim. Here it says, Hine ha am yotze mi mitzrayim. What's the difference between the two? The nation and a nation? So the difference is, 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 is as follows. So the difference between the words of Balak to Bilam and then Bilam, the words of Bilam to Mokadim, Hashem. No? Excuse me? Mokadim. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, this is exactly, if you want to understand how does anti-Semitism works, it all, this is, I think, for me, I mean, with my small mind, this is the root of anti-Semitism action. In those, in those interactions between Balak and Bilam and Bilam and Hashem. And you need to understand how, how exactly it works. Those difference really, of course, uh, the, the Mefarshim dealt with this tremendously. So the Al Sheikh says, Al Sheikh when? In the, in the 16th, time of Mran. 16th Mran. century, very good, 16th century. Where did he live? It's fat. Where was he buried? It's fat. Where is the shul? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, two doors down from the Abu Afshul. It's right there, the Al Sheikh. If you happen, unfortunately, it's very dangerous to go to Tzfat now. It's kind of out of the question. I mean, just send bombs all the time. But if you go to Tzfat, you know, make it, make it your business. Listen, I love Yerushalayim madly. I'm, Yerushalayim is. I don't know what to tell you. Yerushalayim is Yerushalayim, no? Why well, once you step foot in Yerushalayim, it's. It, 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 you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Yerushalayim, I don't know, you're just like, it's my, it's my, my high school sweetheart, as they say. Ahavat Neurai. I love Yerushalayim. It, it, it grabs you like it all over your body. However, you should spend one Shabbat in Tzfat. That will grab you in a kishkis. Tzfat on Shabbat. But make sure you stay there on Thursday also. So you see how people prepare. You walk in this in the neighborhood of I love the old city. I love the old cities altogether. But you smell the smell. Oh Ribono Shalom. Ez a Yofi. Ez a Yofi. Ez a Makom. Eretz Israel. Ez a Yofi. Not to believe. Not to believe. It's it it's Ah. When you leave there you have tears in your eyes. And if not, come to me, I'll check you out because there's something wrong with you. <laughs> So he says, the reason between Ha'am and Am, the al Sheikh says, Keval, and I'm quoting, Le'aktin Erkam, to make them not important, irrelevant. In other words, it's not a recognized nation. Hmm. It's not an established nation. Just Am, just a bunch of people, Am. It says, Ki im Am Stam, just it's small, insignificant. It's not, a, it's not a, a nation among nations. Also, by doing so, he reduces the, the magnitude of the miracle of Yetziat Mitzrayim. Ah, I'm Yetzi Mitzrayim. Ah, they just ran away. Blah, blah. Hmm. That's exactly what happened to us now. They want to make us irrelevant. They want to make us un, unvalid. Then we're invalid. Then we have a right. We don't have a right to defend ourselves. You know how many Muslim countries are in the world? You know how many Christian countries are in the world and Buddhist countries? You know how many Jewish country states? There's only one. And yet we are not allowed to live there. We're not allowed to do what we think is right and so on and so forth. And this is, this is all stems from that. This is all stemmed from that. So, and, and, and such, you know, because it says, because it says, if he would, he would agree, he came out of Mitzrayim, and so on and so forth, 
that's already gives them importance. But the al says, Yotze mi elav, it's like he was just kind of rejected, like a pimple that was bursted out. I'm Yotze mi Mitzrayim. That's what he was saying. And this is exactly what happened to us now. And that's what I'm saying to you. You cannot stand to the side. We had enough of this. You cannot stand to the side and take insults of your irrelevance as a Jew. Because once you become irrelevant as a Jew, you are irrelevant as a person, and therefore there's not a problem if we're going to exterminate you. I'm not saying take, take measures to your hands and take like using force and so on and so forth, you know. If things come down to it for self-defense, that's something else. But, well, we have our ways, you know. State your concern. Make sure you tell all your senators and the congressmen that if they're not going to start, stop with the nonsense that they're doing, and prevent all the nauseating garbages happening, you're going to make sure that not only you, all your friends and all your family are never going to vote for them and their party ever again. You have a voice. Call the mayor. Send a letter to the policeman, to the police chief. It's disgusting. Send a letter to the, to the, to the uh, what is it, to the uh, union of stewardesses in, in Delta Airlines that will complain that the, uh, they said you cannot wear a Palestine flag. Let me ask you a question. You know, you know who kidnapped most planes in the world than anybody else? The Palestinians. And then you're wearing a tag as a stewardess? I want to see what will happen if I would go on a plane with, uh, with Al-Qaeda, Al -Qaeda, or what's his name, the uh, ISIS flag on me, or pin. Oh, what will happen if I will wear, just because I might just like it, a Ku Klux Klan pin on my lapel? I'm gonna be tossed out from the door, from the, from the plane that's like 30,000 feet. Why are you keeping quiet? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Don't make yourself irrelevant because the effort, the first way to exterminate the Jew is to make him irrelevant. And that's what Imachimo Hitler did. He made the Jews like at the level of cockroaches or rats. Irrelevant. Choose your name. Huh? Choose your name. Yeah. Absolutely. Make them irrelevant. Now they're irrelevant. Okay, then exterminate them. Very simple. It all comes from there. And the al Sheikh already read that. And he saw that in the words of Balak. And those words, this kind of disgracing rhetoric, Bil'am could not say to Hashem. That's why he tried to fix it by, you know, because he, he became a messenger to, to Balak. He tried to fix it. And why? As the El Shaykh says, Because he was afraid that Hashem is going to be so mad at them, Hashem is going to wipe them out. Why? Because he was Michael Bekvod Israel Uvenisavit Barach. Because he disgraced the honor of, of the Jews and the miracles that God Himself did. Very simple. And therefore he came and he says he put a patch upon a patch on the words of, of Balak. He kind of tried to change them and so on and so forth. And that's why it says, Ine am yatsa, right? Instead of that, he says, Ine ha, you know, uh, and then he used the word ha'am, ha'yotse. He used the word the, the means importance, right? And because, and it says, ki am gadolu le'ashem. Because that's a great nation to God. On the other hand, Rabbi Shlomo Ephraim Me Wulchnitz, also known as the expensive vehicle, Kliakar, Kliakar, that was young, younger than Ma'ara Malshech in about 30 something or 30 years or so, understood that the word Bil'am to Hashem are in a way more severe than the word to Balak to Hashem. And that's why he wrote, and I'm quoting, Ine Am Yatsami Mitzrayim Yatsa. Yatsa, so don't think the Balaam, Bilam is such a tzaddik. That gam ken rasha merusha. He say am yatsa, in other words, l'sha'avar, in the past. Mashma, right, that you learn from this, he's, he's there, yatsa. However, what he says, 
הנה העם היוצא ממצרים, בלק סז העם יצא, בלעם סז העם יוצא. מה, what do you learn from the words יוצא? They still are in the process of slavery. In other words, he comes to tell them, to remind them, to remind the Kadosh Baruch Hu that they still have the slave mentality. He wants to remind the Kadosh Baruch Hu in a way the bad actions that, that Bnei Israel took. And it says, why? Because it says, Nitena Rosh ve'nashuva Mitzrayma. Let's, let's, let's make ourselves uh, a new leader and let's go back to Mitzrayim. So Bilam does the same thing, but in a different way. But the way he does it, it's so kind of passive aggressive. That's why passive aggressive stay away from them. Passive aggressive people and negative people, these are the two people you got to flush them down the toilet and stay away like a mile from them. These are negative people. Stay away. They'll, they'll destroy you before you know what even hit you. And every... And every, and because of that, and every complaint that they complain, they always say Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim. So therefore it says, you see, they are still going out of Mitzrayim. That's what Bilam is saying. And that is, this is what we have to deal with today. All these efforts we have to deal with today. Whatever they are doing applies to us. I don't think this is something that only them is as, as, as you could see with your own eyes. It happens today. Both in Israel, in, in America, and in Europe altogether. It's terrible. Now, go back to the tents. If we're going to look at it this way, many times looking at the grass of the neighbor, and there is a, a famous Israeli writer, his name is Meir Ariel. And without getting into this, he wrote one time this, a poem, a song, a ballad about the grass of the neighbor is greener. So how did he achieve that? He wanted to say to stay loyal to that. So how did he do it? By destroying his own grass all the time to make the other garden, the, other, the neighbor's grass greener, you know. Of course, in the kibbutz it didn't go well, but that's a nice... So, but that look, that, that outlook of always looking what he has and what I don't have and so on and so forth, many times leads us to an effort to try to imitate that person as well. And why? Because we think since his grass is greener, everything is better by him, so therefore I'm going to reach happiness and joy as much as he does, because after all, his grass is greener. That effort of keeping up with the Joneses is something that we all are infected by, especially in our community. Everybody wants, what's wrong with the houses here? I mean, what's wrong with the, like a small ranch or a cape? Why do you need to have, a, you know, five, six, seven bedroom with marbles all? What do you, you want a mausoleum while you're alive? What do you need this for? And a pool. And, and a pool, yeah, in, in New York. Thank you very much, in a pool in New York. And, and, and yet, you, th you, want, you ask me, what the Ari do? I mean, like you're going to the pool and your wife is sitting in the pool, you know, like with a bikini, and you want to do the Ari stuff, right? You know, thank you very much. You know, it's like something is not right here. Right, so this kind of this kind of of, uh, of what you know truth that we think it is that that this or this kind of behavior really causes us a complete confusion all the time and really puts us further apart and prevents us from connecting to our own unique individual personality of really who we are. Because if, for example, I want to be always like Ephraim, I could never be myself. I could never would allow myself to be myself because I'm always chasing to be him. How do, we, how do we go about life like this? What future do we give our children when we ourselves are always trying to chase or imitate somebody else? I remember, I forgot there was a movie in, I don't know, the 90s or the 80s uh, about Wall Street. This guy, uh, you know, forgot Kirk, I think it was Kirk Douglas' son. I forgot his name. I don't know his name. So about Wall Street. I think the name of the movie the was Wall Street. Wall Street. What's so, the name of Wall Street? I don't know. I don't remember. It was like a thing. Those things are, I remember things when I was three years old. But things like this, I don't know. Don't ask But I do remember that at the time, all of a sudden, everybody started to wear suspenders and smoke cigars. I just couldn't believe it. Like, what's, what's going on? Why is everybody wearing suspenders and smoking cigars? 
Till somebody tells you, well, you didn't see the movie Wall Street. I mean, that's, uh, so everybody was imitating an, an, an imaginary, you know, character in the movie. Everybody was wearing. So today, if you became a, even a menial in a yeshiva, the first thing you do is you get yourself a pair of suspenders and cufflinks. It's still the same thing. Give me a break. So this, this, you know, and how can I be happy if I never, how could I be happy if I don't know who I am? Who am I? So I could never be happy. This kind of a thing is a, is a, is, is a, is a dead end. This kind of a lifestyle is a dead end. And a person that is always looking into the tent of his friend or to the house of his friend, what, car, what kind of car they bought or where they go on vacation or what kind of ring day she got or what kind of this he got and so on and so forth, really slowly, slowly departs and disconnects from his own personality, from his own roots and his unique roots. And by the way, you do see it in our, in our community where, you know, slowly, slowly, you know, you would see all the Bukhari kids. They look like uh, Ashkenazim, uh, you know, and nothing wrong with the Ashkenazim, but you're not Ashkenazim. They even talk like this. I had guys that I see in yeshiva that are going out to the yeshiva, you know, by me where I live. The Sephardi kids and they make a bracha with Ashkenazi, you know, you know, expression with the, the Ashkenazi bracha. It's like, what's going on here? Oh, not to be different. What do you mean to be different? You're not different. You're a Jew. You're celebrating Judaism by showing that there is other types of Jews. You're Sephardi. This one is like Tawani. This one is whatever. That's why when I go to Israel, I love Israeli shoes. Why? Because you go there, everybody's there. I like the shoes that everybody goes into. The guy with the big peot like this, the guy with the earring, the guy with the shorts, the guy with the jeans, the guy with the borsalino, the guy with the frock. Everybody's there. I'm happy. I even, I'll tell you, I'll tell you when I'm really happier. There is a minion where in, in my parents' town in Krasava that the, the, the minhag of this place is whoever is the chi, whoever is the balko, that's the nusach they're going to daven. So if it's a temani, as a hill, he goes, everybody daven's like, if he does, he does, that's the way it is. I like it. I mean, after all, they're my brothers. But I can't I can be enriched. I'm so fragile. That I, God forbid, that I say that, you know, in this culture there's something beautiful. Listen, I'm a, I'm blue blood Sephardi, right? So that means that I cannot enjoy a good gefilte fish if, if somebody gives me one. If, actually, if it's good. I don't care, it's good, so a gefilte fish, so, so what? <laughs> but I'm not going to try to hide my borekas inside a gefilte fish because, you know... God forbid somebody would look from the window and see that I'm actually eating borekas and not, you know, like, come on, give me a break. But this is as pathetic as it sounds. This is how pathetic we are. And shuls and rabbis should encourage everybody to introduce their, their culture. So, for example, I don't know, let's say, uh, you know, let's say, let's say you, they, there's like 90% Bukhari. I mean, somebody is Iraqi. Okay, that's it. It's not Amba, it's not, uh, 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 nah, they say Amba is good. Amba is the little. I know, I love Amba. But, you know, in my family, they don't like Amba. I like Amba. That's why I think I was adopted. And then I, there's uh, reality. Brother. Excuse me? And then there's reality. What's reality? Ah, the smell of the Amba? No, the, the, the fake that, stuff. That they saw. What do you mean? What do you mean by there's reality? I mean, it's nice what you're saying, but unfortunately, the Judaism isn't like that. Well, you know why? Do you know why Judaism is not like that? Because we let it. Because you and me and everybody else, as much as the goyim do it to ourselves, we allow other people, we, we become subsidiary to the, to the dominant culture without appreciating who I am. They want to fit. Excuse me? They want to fit. I don't need to fit. But they, this is what they want to do. Be strong in who you are. Be but strong. There's, but there's such a hatred, you know? There's what? There's such a hatred. Hatred? You know why there is a hatred? I'm going to tell you why there is a hatred. Because if you don't respect yourself, do you want me to respect you? You gotta demand respect for me. How can you come demand respect for me if you don't respect yourself? Do you don't respect, you don't respect your ancestors? Why should I respect them? That's why. It's not because it, because you allowed it to happen. 
If you are around and I'm, and I'm a square, we're not going to fit one another. One of us will have to break. Yeah, but look at Queens, for example. Yeah. You have a dominant presence of uh, Ashkenazi Shivas, and then you have not so dominant uh, Sephardi Shivas. Mm -hmm. And all the Sephardi want to go to Ashkenazi Shivas. That's right. That's right. And you know why? why I, I, do you know why it happens? Because there aren't enough people that are going to tell you what I'm telling you. <laughs> and that would re So, how do we fix it? We'll tell you, we tell you, we tell everybody, and we should do it ourselves. And that's what we should teach our kids as well. One of the things that I insisted on in my house is not only that my kids will speak Hebrew and English, well, first English because they live here, but they also speak Spanish. So much that my granddaughters, my, my son Gilad, they speak, my granddaughters speak fluid Spanish. Why? Because we, we sfarred them. There's nothing wrong with that. Why? If, if, you know, you should see the faces, and I love it when somebody tells me, ah, oh, you don't understand not. Yiddish? Somebody starts talking to me in Yiddish. Like, Excuse me, I don't, speak, I don't speak German. So what do you mean? You don't understand English? Uh, Yiddish? No, I don't. I'm Sephardi. I speak Ladino. You speak Ladino? No. So why should I speak Yiddish? One time I was in a yeshiva. I arranged for Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu, Allah Shalom, to come and give a shmuz there, which was a fantastic shmuz. Amazing. I mean, it was an experience of a lifetime, I can tell you that. A huge Ashkenazi Bet Medrash. Maybe 300 people inside of it. Come, Rav Mordechai, give them a shiur, like, knock their socks out. Where was it? I won't say where. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you later off camera. Mm -hmm. The Mashgiach comes to me before and says to me, okay, so the rabbi is going to come? Yes. What language is he going to speak? I looked at him like this. I said, in Yiddish or English? So I said to him, Adoni, Ivrit. What is Yiddish? He said, oh, Leshon HaKodesh? You say Ivrit, Ken, Ivrit is Leshon HaKodesh. You don't like it? Drink cold water. You don't stop being apologetic about who you are. But in order to be proud of who you are, you also need to, first of all, know who you are. Where you came from. Dame Ayin Bata. What do we need to say Kaddish for answers if we, if we don't care about them? Why? It's hypocritical, isn't it? I'm not saying put somebody else down. Putting somebody else down, that shows your weakness. Celebrate the difference. The beauty of Judaism is to celebrate. I mean, we're so much that we were 12, 13 tribes for crying out loud. 13 mm -hmm. tribes with different families and each one was to his own. So much it's rooted into Judaism that if you look, every tribe has his own baitin. And the way they interpret it, within the boundaries of Halacha. What, what? Bet Shamayim, Bet Hillel? They disagree with one another, but yet they married one another. Because the Machlokit was Shem Shamayim. So when you don't agree with me, and because of that you feel to put me down, and I feel to put you down, that's only, that's not the Shem Shamayim. That's, uh, first of all, the ultimate sign of weakness and a potential death. If we are not going to wake up and smell the hummus, our future is not that bright. And don't tell me stories about Mashiach because it ain't coming like this. It ain't coming. It ain't coming. Not like that. I give it, prove it to you. The like Gemara says when Achav, there were a bunch of Rashaim in this generation, of De Avodah Zarah for crying out loud. Could be nothing worse than that. Yet they were united. And you think they did, they succeeded. They were divided. They failed. Look, the time of Beit HaMikdash Shashini, they were divided. Look what happened. Look what happened to the point that they killed one another in the Temple Mount. In Beit HaMikdash, they were killing one another. Ribbono Shel Olam, it's un, un, unthinkable. But that's what they did. HaKadosh Baruch Hu looks at things different than us. And we need to understand that. And that comes with respect. But if I don't respect myself, how should I respect you also? It's something foreign to me. If I don't respect your privacy and your expression, I should not expect to you do the same thing to me. It's not a competition. It's all about beauty. If I could, imagine that Kadosh Baruch Hu created the world with one type of tree. 
You know, for example, Japanese maple, you know how many different types? There are 400 different types of Japanese maples. They're amazing. That's what I'm talking about. So, from all this, and this is, this is uh, you know, if you are not going to, and, and not going like this, and not concentrating and looking to somebody else, that's the mentality of a slave, what he has, what he gave, and so on and so forth. When we say, Am a nation should, should dwell by itself, really expresses one of the most uh, basic existential uh, qualities of Am Yisrael, loneliness. The problem that we have, we want all the going to like us. We don't like ourselves. How do you not like us? Right? Jews were always a minority, and unfortunately always, always influenced by whatever is around us. But also, what kept us is the fact that we knew how to keep our identity. But when you lose your identity, it doesn't make a difference if you are in Tel Aviv or you're in Texas. If you lose your identity one way or another, you're gone. Now, I don't care what label do you put to yourself. You're gone. So from all this brachot of Bilam, as we say, the most famous one is Matovu Alecha Yaakov. And when we say it, of course, in our Masora is that we refer to it to Batem Midrashot, right? Matovu Alecha Yaakov, and then Mishken Otecha Yisrael, right? In Masechet Sanedri, in Daf, in Daf? Nun Vav. What did you say? Kufei. Kufei. Amud? Right. Wow! <laughs> Everybody got it. All right. They says mi birchato shel oto rasha from the blessing of that wicked uh, Bilam. Atal amed ma'ya bilvavo. You learn what was in his heart. And he says bikesh lo mar she lo yulem batek nisayot. He he want to say that they should not have shuls. Velo yulem batem bidroshot and they should not have yeshivot. And he says, but he was forced because the kadosh baruch forced him. And he says, Matovu Alecha Yaakov. He didn't want them to have it. Now, any effort that wants to cancel a yeshiva, close a bet, a bet a Knesset, and if you, and if you have a shul and you somehow are greedy and you sell it for cash to make a Korean church, shame on you. I don't care how much Kirov you say you do. Right? And later on, the Gemara says, on the uniqueness of this bracha, Kulam, in other words, all the brachot of Bilam came to us in exile as a curse. Keklala. Besides, batek nisiyot batek midrashot. All the brachot, intermarriage, everything became all a problem. All these brachot were suspended. In Galut, became a klala. The only thing that saved us is having synagogues, shuls, and to have in yeshivot to learn. That's why you gotta have them. You gotta have them. Now, Mishkenotecha Yisrael, what is Mishkenotecha Yisrael? Mishkenotecha Yisrael, that's Beit Abba, where you get a home. And Bilam Rasha, right, he came from a very uh, liberal and loose society. Everything was allowed. You want, you want your daughter to fornicate with the stranger? Go ahead. Go ahead, do it. Everything was allowed by, by Bilam society. Right? Midian and Moab were known to, have a, to be a society with no values, no, no, no tzniut, modesty, no kedusha, no holiness. A person that is, that is qualities could be summarized in Ein Ra, Veruach Gvoa, Venefesh Rechava. Right? That's why Ein Gvoa is... Oh, all about himself, right? The Ruach Ein Ra is a bad eye, everything negative. So I told you negative people. Very arrogant. Ruach Ra. Ruach Gvoa. I'm sorry, Ruach Gvoa. Venefesh Rechava. Venefesh Rechava means the Kol Mutar. What do you want? You want to smoke dope? No, okay, but sit there. You want to go with a donkey? Go with a donkey. No. Zang Gizung. Ish Ben Munato. Well, whatever you want. I don't care. You got to have an envelope of operation. Bilam did not have that. And if you want to look further, look at Pirkei Avot, Perikei, Mishnah Havbet. And he says, and all of a sudden he comes in and he looks up and he sees Am Yisrael sitting to his, to his tribes, to his tents, and he sees the Jewish home, not only in its glory, 
but mainly in his modesty, that Sinata Prat, the, 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 the privacy of an individual, the Kvod Adam, you have to respect people, not only Jews, you have to respect people, Kvod Adam, are not just empty slogans. For us, it is a way of life. For us, it is a way of life. Something that we do every day. Why? The Petach of Reuven, the opening of Reuven, is not directed to the opening of Shimon. And this one is different, as we said before. Why? So Reuven cannot look at Shimon's wife and the other way around. Matovu Alecha Yaakov, these are Batem Midrashot. Mishkenotecha Israel is where you dwell, is that's your home. We need to make sure that our home, those things, those qualities come and we bring it home. Modesty, respect, honor, control. Not to go into what he did and what she did, and they are going to Florida, so how come we not go to Florida? Because we cannot afford to go to Florida. Whatever they do, they do. Does her husband love you as much as I love you? We don't care. That's Mishkenotecha Israel. That's Mishkenotecha Israel. He understood that both Bate Knesset and Bate Midrash are not just like any other uh, religions in, 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 in words and places of worships, right? Because ours is different. And the way we do things is different. We in, this is supposed to, in Bet Medrash, when we learn, allow everybody an opinion. And every opinion is valid. And look at the Machloket in the Gemara. Look at the Gemara. Every opinion is recorded, not just to show you the Jews cannot agree on anything. On the contrary, to show you that every opinion counts. If it's a valid opinion, every opinion counts. And <clears throat> the but when the life of a Jew, the social life and you know of the Jew, uh, are different than they are in 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 the shul, right? Then we have a problem. You cannot act at home one way and in the shul the other way. You cannot act like a chuligan at home and you come into shul. Everybody thinks you tzaddik adol adol has to be the same. Because you see, that's the Lashon. Matovu alecha Yaakov, mishkenotecha Israel. It has to be the same. You got to be truthful. Emet mi alef ataf. We need, that's something we need to, how do you, one of the things that you, will help you to pick up a spouse is, is that. Ask those questions. Don't just look at sheker achen ve'evel ayofi. Or how much da money daddy has in the account. Look at those things. What are they looking for? How are they looking to live their life? What is their, what is their uh, constitution for life? What, what, what are the bylaws for their, for their behavior? How do they act? What do they like to do? Is there any dissonance? Is there any uh, uh, mismatching? in one thing that they say to the other. The mistakes that people make is because they close their eyes for that. And the itlahavud, the excitement of Bilam, that the, the tents were not, con not you know, directed to one another, also came because he came to understand, he realized that every family in, in Am Israel, at the time at least, was busy with building its own personal home. Its own, whatever it is, it's sacred. And for us, it's the same thing. We have, we have the Shabbat. Shabbat, what? Separates us from the Goyim. Oh, Liron! Oh, Hashem, Yechianu Vekiimanu Vekiyanu Tzaddik Ben Tzaddik. Happy to see you, Mazal Tov, Mazal Tov, Mazal Tov. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
The Shabbat separates us from the nations. The Kashrut separates the family. Right? And the Alachot Nida, Tarat HaMishpacha, is even a closer separation. It's, it's between husband and wife. The Kedusha of Am Yisrael is, and what was his excitement, is the Chidush, there was no dogma in Am Yisrael. Each family within, and I'm saying again, within the boundaries of Alacha, lived their life according to what fits their needs the best way. But there's no diversion of Alacha. It can only be achieved when you first of all respect yourself and respect the others and you know what to do. If you don't know what you're doing, you can't do it. You're going to fail. That's why you're going to come and learn. Limud Alachot Abatai. Listen, I love Gemara. Gemara is fantastic. Fantastic. But you got to learn Alachot every day. You see this? This is the whole Shulchan Aruch. Without any commentators. This was written by Marana Bet Yosef for you to finish once a month. There are people in a lifetime that never finish it once, not even half, not even Or Chaim. Make it your business. Make it your business. You want to try me? Try me. Come here. I'll make my time. I'll make myself available to you. We'll learn Alachot if you want. We'll take the we'll take the Or Chaim. We start from Aleph. And we're going to go, Bezat Hashem, until Taf Kuf, Kaf, Kaf, Taf Resh Tzadik Zayn. Till Taf Resh Tzadik Zayn. Till Tzu. Plus one. We can do it. You want our guys to arrange a group? Every day. The guys will learn Gemara, I'll learn with you, Allah. You want to do it? You want to take me up to that? Come on, make my day. I'm up for a challenge. But, when we finish, we make a nice seuda. Bourbon is preferred. Corvette. Whatever you want. <laughs> Up to you. You want to arrange it? You can arrange it. I don't care. Now, and, and, and whatever is, now what we said, when they arrange the family, is based according to their uniqueness and its own dynamic of that person, of that family as well. Their own dynamics in the, in the family. And this is, this concept, would bring, brought about flourishing and growth in each and every one of us because we're putting ourselves on our own unique way, as Chazal tells us, Chanoch Lanar Al Pidarko. You have to teach people individually, not by a system, no shita. There's no dogma. We're dealing with people. Each one learns differently, each one is a different personality. One guy you gotta be strict with, one guy you gotta be lenient with. One guy you have to go fast, one guy you have to go. Chinuch is an individual thing, it's not a system. Systems, that's good for, for brainwashing thing, whether it's uh, you know, the new religion of liberalism in the world, or communism, or any isms. That's systems, that's dogma, not for us, not for, not for Yahadut, not for Judaism. And at the end, when you are able to reach this kind of flourishing and growth, you come to become happy. You feel fulfilled and satisfied. And that, in return, would bring you to a true internal happiness. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.